Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris and in today's episode, we're going to be continuing on with our VGC Series 8 content playing today, one of the brand new restricted Pokemon that we got introduced with the Sword and Shield titles and that's going to be Zacian. So it's kind of a little bit different from your standard Zacian builds that you're seeing in the format at the minute. You know, you've got a lot of Zacian Lapras combinations going around but this is taking quite a bit of inspiration from the usage stats in Japan where you're seeing a bit more usage with Charizard played with Zacian. Something that I've been playing around with, with for quite a while now and it's nice to be able to finally get it onto the channel to kind of show you guys what Zacian can do in this sort of build. As always the Pogba Pace for this team will be down in the description below and if you stick around till the end of the episode I'll be throwing up a rental code so you can try this team on the doubles ranked ladder yourself. <laughs> So first up today we have a little bit of a mirror but it's not quite a mirror we've got the Zacian we've got the lapdog team so Zacian, Lapras, Incineroar, Amoongus, Regieleki and Landorus the form so as you can see from this you can see that my opponent is playing Zacian as well it's going to come down to probably how we approach this matchup but I think you know we've got a little bit of an edge here we've got some instant speed control with our talk of Venus or mod and we could also go Charizard but it's a little bit risky going Going with the Charizard, especially with the Reggie, Aleki, and the Landorus Theory, that are likely to kind of come out as leads from my opponent. We could see the Lapras here, but I would imagine it's probably more something that my opponent will try and keep in the back. Um, so it might be worth going like screens. Grimmsnarl, get our screens up. Landorus isn't bad. Uh, we need a pivot for sure from Landorus into something in the back. You know, Zacian's not bad. I do want to bring it. Um... Do we bring Torkoal here, you know? Because if we've got this lead, then we're kind of limited to what we can bring, in all, in all honesty. The other option, of course, is going for a Venusaur lead with Torkoal, uh, and then having like Zacian Grimmsnarl in the back. Um, I think it's not a bad idea, um, in all honesty. We could potentially see um, Incineroar as well, but I'm kind of more inclined to bring the Venusaur because it gives us a clear um, kind of direction to go. Even if the Landorus comes out, there's Venusaur in its max form. As long as the Landorus isn't a uh, life orb, you should take the max airstream. You should do enough damage to it. It gives us other options against Reggie Alecki. And it's all about kind of just paving the way with this team so we can get Zacian in the late game, get that, that attack boost, and then kind of clean up from there. And so we are going to see Amoongus and we are going to see Landorus from my opponent. Um, we do lead off with our talk and a uh, Venusaur so we've got a couple of options like I say you know we can go for the max the G max uh, vine lash here um, and it starts stacking the damage up nicely on to the landers Tokol is in a little bit of a precarious position because it is going to be prone to getting spored um, which isn't ideal at all um, and we don't really have a switch in to anything in the back at the moment so it might be worth kind of kind of foregoing just go for a heat wave um, and you know, the, the other option is what we could potentially do is we could protect Torkoal and just go sleep out of here. It's risky because there's always the, the, the idea that my opponent could be running like um, something like uh, safety goggles on Landorus or Lum on Landorus. Uh, it's always an option. Uh, and they've got to be a little bit wary about us going for the sleep powder here as well because it's such an option. The thing is for my opponent, like if we just led Torkoal Charizard, we'd be in such a dominant position. Like right now, we can just launch off G Max Wildfire or uh, Heat Wave, get some damage onto that Landorus, and then get the, the Venusaur in the next turn. That's probably the best way to approach this, but it's difficult when you're you're looking at a lot of different options that my opponent's got available to them. Um, we are going to get this attack off. We're not going to see the Landorus actually max here, which is interesting because whatever it does now, it's going to go down this turn to the residual damage, which is interesting. So the Swords Dance here. Um, okay, it's a little bit of a waste from my opponent. Like I said, we're probably going to see Toko get spored. Um, yep, that makes sense. But the Landorus is going to go down. So we're in a phenomenal position because one of the things that you've got to worry about when you're playing like especially a sun archetyped um, is, is Landorus. Landorus is always going to be something that causes you a lot of issues. Um, 
maybe thinking that we weren't going to max there. Uh, maybe thinking that we were going to go for the sleep powder there, taking the opportunity to get a sword stance off. There's lots of combinations that we could have went for where the, the sword stance would have been the better play to, to, to go for. Um, now we are seeing the Zassian hit the field. Um, and we can a max quake into it. We'll do some nice damage to it and just kind of continually hit that heat wave button. I think that's not a bad play. And the Zassian can't really go for the substitute here. It can go for a protect. Um, we are going to take a bunch of damage from Behemoth Blade if they decide to go down that route. But I mean, they're going to be very close to getting knocked out if um, if they're able to take this at all. Just about. But with a couple of chips, uh, like in two turns, it's gone. It's it's gone in two turns, the, the damage that we're doing. So, I mean, that's the kind of thing that we want to be doing. Clearing the, clearing the way for Zacian. And I think Venusaur and Charizard between them with the Sun support do it extremely well. Like, it's a very hyper-offensive team, but it's very oppressive as well at this, in the same respect. Now, we do get taken down by, by Venusaur, uh, by Zacian, but that's fine. That's super fine, because... Now we'll take the residual damage. It gives us another turn to wake up potentially with um Torkoal. Can you wake up? Are we gonna wake up? Now the pollen puff on Amoongus is nice. I do like that from my opponent. It's a nice option. We do wake up, fortunately. We get the heat wave we hit. We should take both targets down now. Or at least very close to anyway. So the, the wake up there is quite nice. Um definitely helps us out as we, we can bring in Zassian now. And it's going to be quite a quick one, this one. So we might get a few more games in today than uh, we normally do. But, um, okay, well, got the Insin coming in. <laughs> Makes it kind of difficult because we can't freely uh, just go for the sub here. Because if we go for the sub, then the fake out spore is a bit of a problem. But then again, are you going to fake out Zassian here? Because if you do, you're a Moongus, you know. Like, I think you've got to fake out the, the toll call. You've got to fake out the toll call. You have to. We can lock in Eruption. We'll protect, though, just to be a little bit safer. Uh, you've got to fake out Spore, the toll call, for sure. 100%. Um, no, they don't. Okay, well, they're just Spore in the toll call. That makes more sense. Yeah. Okay, well... This is still alright, because... Hmm. We've got it. We've got the Torkoal. The Torkoal needs to wake up. The residual damage is always going to be helpful, uh, but the Torkoal needs to wake up. That's what we're kind of waiting on to get to get the Amoongus. Um, and we can't really go for. Yeah, we can't. We can't substitute because they just flare blitz and spore us. And I think Zassian's like super important for us here. So what we'll do? Switch in Landorus here. We'll. S Suck up that uh, Flare Blitz from the Incinero and we'll get spored at the same time. And then it's just playing the waiting game. What wakes up first? Because my opponent's not really got any recovery outside of the Pollen Puff. Yeah, they can restore the health of Incinero. But thing is, if we can get Zassian back onto the field um, and get... Oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? I haven't even clicked in. Oh my god, oh my god, we're going for the double protect, we might lose this now, we might lose this, I'm not even kidding, oh god, ah, uh, what are we doing, <laughs> I'm sitting here, it's because I've got it behind me, it's literally because I got it behind me, you guys are thinking, what's he doing, why is he not clicking in, and I'm thinking, I've clicked in, it's alright, it's alright, I switched out Zassian into Landorus, and I, I definitely hadn't done that, now we're, we're getting nailed, we're getting nailed, this could be of, uh, we get the double protect. I mean, we're so lucky there. We are so lucky. We are so lucky. As they max guard. And they're going to try and spawn. Zacian. Um, they're going to spawn. We need to get rid of the Amoongus. You know, that's a big thing for us. Tokol wakes up. Uh, we get the eruption off. This should take down the Amoongus now. So, Tokol's not wanting to stay asleep. Which is very always very useful. Um, and now we can just yawn the Incineroar protect Zassi, uh substitute here i mean we still wouldn't be in a loot like we i think we'd win if we hadn't got the double protect off there but the thing is we we, we should have been punished for that for not uh really paying attention but very good game to my opponent and uh let's uh let's just wake up okay it's been a long long day for myself anyway i hope you guys have had a good day whatever you've been up to but i've had a pretty rough day so it's kind of nice to sit back sometimes, do a video, uh, do a new team, 
and um, just record some record some battles it's always it's always a chill out but um yeah i've had a rough a rough old day but you get those sometimes don't you you gotta just be like it's fine it's fine it's done now it's behind me let's look forward let's keep looking forward that's what it's all about right let's get into our next opponent of the episode okay up next we have in velto a reggie lecky a rillaboom incineroar Landorus Incarnate and Metagross. Hmm. So we've got the Landorus Incarnate is an interesting one. It's generally starting to really slowly pick up usage and uh, it's very good. Uh, it's got some excellent special attacks. Uh, it's got Sheer Force as well. Obviously it's hidden ability so it can hit like a truck. So you've got to be very careful for it. And uh, speed stat of 101 as well makes it uh, very dangerous you know i'm pretty sure it's 101 isn't it it is 101 uh let me just double check this because otherwise i'm gonna be like what am i talking about landerous theory yeah 101 i'm right i'm right i'm right so what are we gonna do here um zassi not bad we've got to be careful about the reggie lecky with its speed control for sure screen's gonna be useful um against majority of things um Could lead Charizard. I mean, it does well against Evelto. The only problem would be um, if we see Regilecki as a lead. Obviously, that would be a little bit problematic. Um, I think we'll go Grimmsnarl. Do we want to go Grimmsnarl? Or do we go Charizard, Torkoal? Let's go Charizard, Torkoal. Let's go Zacian. And let's go Grimmsnarl. I think that's the that's the that's the four that we're going to bring. Um, we'll go Charizard this game. We should have went Charizard last game, you know. But the Venusaur did an incredible job anyway. And like just having those calcs, I think sometimes when like I've obviously gone through my calcs a bunch, uh, especially with the Venusaur. So like having that kind of understanding that you can take the airstream from a Landorus. It gives you a little bit more freedom in those situations. And you, you saw kind of pay off there, you know. Um, so it wasn't like I was being careless in that first game. I knew that the Landorus, unless it was Life Orb, unless it had Help and Hand Support, which it didn't have Help and Hand Support. Uh, there's a chance it was Life Orb, but it's not the most popular used item on, on Landorus. So, you know, I, I've got the, the, the kind of leeway there to get away with, with that play and get that residual damage kind of stacking up as soon as possible. Okay, well, we're seeing Incineroar. Uh, we're seeing Evel too. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to go for a yawn into Eva. Uh, do we yawn? Do we yawn? Do we yawn? Uh, do we yawn it? Because no, I think the Incineroar is not going to. I don't think the Incineroar um, is the Incineroar going to fake out. Incineroar could fake out here for sure. I'm going to go for the G Max Wildfire into Eva. So start getting that chip on, and we'll get some ridiculous damage onto it um, to start with. So. We'll be able to at least get some good damage onto it. Not proc a weakness policy or anything like that, which would be good. And then um, if we can get a yawn onto it as well, it also helps us out a bunch because it, it frees up some room for Charizard the next turn to, to potentially get like a Scorching Sands off. The other option is obviously yawning the Incineroar slot, expecting like a parting shot uh, from it to come out. Which isn't a bad idea because then you catch something that, that your opponent's bringing onto the field as a kind of soft check or a check to Charizard and then you've got that room to max god the next turn or uh, like uh, they fall asleep or they have to switch out again it really just it's really disruptive. Um, but we'll see what my opponent goes for. They may just go for max airstream here which you know I, I don't mind. No fake out which is what we expected uh, so we should be able to get a yawn off into Evelto, which is huge for us, which is massive. Uh, max Darkness, no Max Airstream, which is interesting. Um, into Torkoal, take us down to the Sash. And unless we see a Snarl, Snarl could like scupper our plans a little bit. Um, Snarl always misses as well. Snarl can miss, so you never know. Just a parting shot, that's fine, because that's what, like, we expect that. We, we we can deal with that 100% as we get the yawn off into Evelto, which is perfect, because no matter what terrain you've got out on the field, it doesn't matter, because we're going to be able to put you to sleep because you're a flying type, Evelto. And there's Regielecki, here he comes. Um, yeah, that's the thing, like, the yawn into the Regielecki would have been just as valuable here, you know. Solar Power going to take a little bit of chip. Residual damage, gonna chip away at everything. Now we've got the option to max guard here and the Evelto go to sleep um, or 
or we attack into Regieleki. Because the thing is, right, I think what we could do is uh, we can switch into Grimmsnarl. I think what we'll do. Uh, we could Max Guard. I think Max Garden's a sensible play here because we've got the, the minus one special defense. In most situations, you'd be able to take a magnet boosted Thunderbolt from Regieleki here. But the fact is, the minus one special defense makes it a little bit more difficult. It makes it a bit more tricky. So what we can do, Velt are going to switch out. That's fine. Uh, Incineroar likely to come in, I think. But Torkoal's done a good job here. Um, ooh, Lander is coming in. Okay, that's, that's fine. I'll keep Torkoal around for later so we can kind of get the sun back if we need it. Um, we'll max guard. Where are you going, Regieleki? Just Electroweb, that's fine. You do that all you want, my friend. Now, we've got a couple of options where we can potentially go for... We've got lag and tail, you see? We could we could lag and tail something right now if we want. Or we could kind of buy that time, just set our screens up, set a light screen up. Light screen might be a nice option to go for. Um, but you can't underestimate the power or the fact that Landorus Incarnate could be more of a physical variant as well. And it's probably got Stone Edge. Um, so... Um, yeah, light screen. Get Torkoal in, I think. I think what we'll do is get Torkoal in. I know we're going to lose our sun, and we're losing our, our, our Dynamax, but you've really got to look at the end goal for these sort of matches, I think. You can't be like, oh, I've got a Dynamax, I want to keep it on the field, I think. You know, like, do you want to win the game or not? So you've got to look further ahead and say, well, I need Charizard as a resource later, so I'm going to, I'm just going to make this call now. And we get at the same time we get to kind of scout out what my opponent's trying to do, what attacks they've got, what variant of Landorus this is, Stone Edge. Okay, so that makes sense. Uh, and it gets a crit as well. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Now, what's going to be more useful to uh, to get rid of in this situation? We've got Zacian, come in. Zacian can deal with Landorus theory for sure. Now I think what we could potentially do is lagging tail, lagging tail the the Aleki, right? And then we go for Behemoth Blood into uh, Labrys. Because I think they're going to be kind of lulled into the false sense of security where they can Electro Web and then go for like an Earthquake or an Earth Power, whatever, into, um, into Zacian. But if we lag and tail onto the Aleki and we go Behemoth Blade, you know, there's also a possibility that, uh, yeah, Incineroar comes onto the field as well. But this is this is still all right because now Charizard has a way easier time, especially against, like, Reggie Aleki. So if we can get Charizard back onto the field safely enough, be fine. And there we go. Let's see what this Reggie Aleki's got. What are you going to gift our Grimmsnarl? The Focus Sash. Okay, well, that's 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 useless right now. Okay, well, the Volt Switch does a decent amount. Uh, what are we going to see come in? Maybe the Landorus again? All right. Oh, no, it's Yveltal. Yveltal. Um, right, well, what's Yveltal really doing here? It's not really doing very much. I mean... The Incineroar is putting on more pressure on Zazassian for sure. Um, we've got a light screen up. We could get a reflect up as well. This is the last turn of our residual damage there, but um, it's done. It's done a decent enough job so far. Um, could we bring Charizard in? Could we bring Charizard in? I don't know if we can really, because the Oblivion Wing's going to do a decent amount of damage. Might be better just going for a Spirit Break, honestly, into Yveltal, and just protecting Zacian. I mean, we might see a fake out Oblivion Wing into Grimmsnarl if they... Oh, okay. Okay. What's coming back in? Hmm. Reggie Alecki. Like, I don't mind this too much. And if we get a Spirit Break into the Yveltal, that's, that's super nice. Yeah, the ability win. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, my opponent's making all the right plays. Like, they're totally, like, baiting us into protecting here, you know? It makes it more difficult for us to uh, to function. Um, and you would imagine the Incineroar's just going to cycle back in after this. Um, we'll get the Oblivion Wing. That's fine. Um... Are they going to protect the Aleki though? That's the that's the big question because we could Sacred Sword. I mean, we could Sacred Sword. I think what we'll do is we'll go for the Regi Aleki there, and then we'll Sacred Sword. Because mm. they're going to switchy Veltal out. They have to switchy Veltal out. Could Behemoth Blade it, but I'd rather get a bit more damage onto Incineroar. Uh, if we see it come in, which I'd imagine, oh, we're not going to see it. We could have Behemoth Blade, but we get the knockout anyway, so that's all right. Um, we get the Spirit Break onto the Aleki. I don't think I'll pick up the knockout, but it puts it down to minus one. So if it does decide to Volt Switch, it might decide to Electric. Oh, it's gone for the Thunderbolt uh, into Grimstone, but we do take that like a champ. Um... And now Behemoth Blade should get well. We can chip off the the Aleki. The lagging tail trick is such a is such a nice option, especially when you've got like a format full of these Pokemon that are like so fast and really threatening. Um, and we've still got a light screen up. I think we could probably get Charizard in because what I want to do is. Um, I'm going to Spirit Break, and I'm going to switch into Charizard. Now they could go for Thunderbolt here, but I honestly think, like, minus one, Reggie Alecki, we've got a light screen up. Charizard's going to take an attack here, coming in. And if not, then Zacian's still in a, a phenomenal position to come back in, plus one, deal with the Incineroar, not really worry too much about Reggie Alecki. And then the Landorus, when it comes in, there's not really any speed control to worry about. So um, I think we'll be able to kind of clean this one up. There's a Thunderbolt. We should take this, like I say. Oh, just about, just about, just about, just about. There's a light screen wearing off, but that's all right. Now, you've got to imagine that my opponent will switch the Incineroar out now. Um, just to get another, like, Intimidate cycle. So, I don't, I don't know. Well, like, the options are, we, be, we go Sacred Sword. And um, then we go Heat Wave. The other option is potential. just go on Heat Wave Substitute. Then it stops any potential Intimidate coming back onto us. Which could be another option for sure. Um, now let's see. What do they do? The Lagging Tails really rendered the, the Reggie Alecki pretty useless here. Um, and a sacred, yeah, there we go. Okay, the behemoth blade would have been the better choice if you're if you're braver to go after the landers. But the fact is, the heat wave plus the sacred sword should be enough to pick up the knockout, and then you've just got the incineroar to worry about with Charizard and Zacian. And our heat wave, thankfully, does hit. We've not got the sun to worry about either. In regards to um, getting knocked out by a solar power, and then just incineroar to come back in, uh, which we can. Um, substitute Scorching Sands or just double protect and then we can kind of substitute Scorching Sands and then Sacred Sword so it's all good it's all good so we should be able to wrap this one up and Zacian putting in some work here doing really well but Charizard as well I think the nice thing about it in both games we've seen Charizard do well in this game and we saw Venusaur do well in the previous game and you know like we did get a bit fortunate in that first one uh, with how we got rid of the Landorus. But, I mean, it wasn't like RNG or anything like that. So, you know, to round it all up, I think the team's performing extremely well. And it's definitely one I would say have a go with. You know, if you've tried the Lapras variants out, I would say try the, the, the Zard variant as well. The Sun variant, Zacian Sun. It's a lot of fun to play. Um, there's a lot of stuff in the min in the format at the minute that struggles so much against Charizard. And, and you know, Charizard and Sun is like, is just ridiculously strong uh so we'll just scorching sands and we'll go for the secret sword that combination should be enough even if we do see a berry yeah yeah scorching sands would be enough and uh, no berry oh there's the berry there it is there's the uh shuka but we've done enough 
to pick up the knockout there and uh, very good game to my opponent so i mean we get to see a, a couple of games with the team and have a talk through how it functions and things like that so hopefully it's been beneficial for you guys but i think it's uh it's hopefully showcased enough to persuade you to have a go with it on on the ladder yourself if you like it or maybe it inspires some ideas that's the whole bottom line of it but like i said good game to my opponent and now we'll jump over and get you guys that rental team uh, so if you do want to play around with it you can do okay friends here is the rental team for today's episode i hope you enjoy it and if you do try it out as always please let me know down in the comment section below what your thoughts are on the team and the concept of zassian and charizard and sun just in general or do you prefer the Zacian with Lapras you know the Zacian Lapras team is something I still want to feature on the channel so if it is something you'd like to see please let me know down in the comment section below I'm kind of trying to get through as many of the restricted Pokemon as you can um, but if you want to see it doubles up uh, I've got a really good uh, Zacian Lapras team we could feature and I've also got another Calyrex uh, Shadow Rider team that I'd love to feature on the team it's kind of an adaptation from that first one but a lot more serious and a lot stronger of a team that we could kind of feature so do let me know down in the comment section but whatever thank you so much for tuning in as always friends have a great rest of your day and i'll catch you all for another episode very soon so until then take care of yourselves and bye bye